Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 2 with you today for December the 12th, 2021. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God Requires Justice. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is the mercy of justice. Our devotional reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Our background scripture is taken from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9. And we'll be studying today from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 7 and verses 9 through 12. Our key verse reads, David asks, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? This is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore David's kindness toward Mephibosheth as an act of justice and equity. Secondly, to reflect on the value of keeping our word. And then thirdly, to show radical kindness to someone in need. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Seeking to Act Justly. And then our second outline is entitled, Provision for Just Treatment. And we certainly thank and praise God that uh, we are able to share our lesson with you again. We thank God for keeping us. We certainly are praying continuously for our country, uh, for each and every family. Certainly praying that the Lord will continue to open up our eyes that we might be able to see uh, his act, uh, his acts of kindness, even through uh, the giving of his only begotten son Jesus Christ as always we encourage you to get your Bible and be prepared to uh, take some notes we want to share quite a bit with you today as we get into uh, one of the book of books of the Bible uh, from the historical category as we look at uh, David's life I want to uh, touch on this biblical context for this lesson and then we'll get to our outlines but 2nd Samuel records the history of David's reign uh, after Saul's death David was anointed as king over Judah and eventually king over all of Israel uh, you can see that in 2nd Samuel chapter 5 verses uh, 1 through 5 uh, David as a man after God's own heart uh, forged the fractured kingdom into a strong united one. With God's help, David completed the conquest of the region God promised to Abraham. That's back over in Genesis chapter 15, uh, verse 18. But even God uh, orchestrated success did not shield him from human failures, nor did they make him immune to the needs of others. The consequences of David's personal sins wreaked havoc in his household and for the nation as well. Yet David pleased God by showing mercy and justice to those who rebelled against him, his enemies and the family of Saul. Neither the passage of time nor all he had suffered at the hand of Saul could prevent uh, David from remembering the covenant between Jonathan himself and himself. Uh, you can see some reference back over in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 20, but with David's kingdom secured and his enemies defeated, David was ready to fulfill his obligation to show kindness and mercy to any of his uh, friend Jonathan's surviving descendants. And so we, we are thankful today that we can see this historical account. But as we look uh, more broadly into this lesson, if you walk away from the context of this lesson uh, without uh, exploring it uh, in a broader context, you may miss a couple of individuals that we should look for in this text today. And we're certainly uh, bear those out with some scripture as well. But the first person that you want to be able to see in this text 
uh, since David is a man after God's own heart, we should be able to see Christ in the actions of David or in the character of David. Uh, so let's keep in mind we want to look for Christ in this text. And we also want to look for ourselves right, in this text. Uh, like any mirror, uh, when you look into a mirror, you look into a mirror to see yourself, what it really is, what it really looks like. And uh, th this character uh, in this context of Meph Mephibosheth, uh, he illustrates a sinner uh, in a broader context. It's an illustration of the nature of a sinner and what that sinner needs underneath the surface. So as we think about, uh, uh, as we said, our study, we want to be uh, mindful of the character or the workings of Christ in this context. And we want to see the, the nature uh, of, uh, of mankind. Uh, this is not personal, right? But this is intended to teach us something uh, uh, about this historical account and again more broadly it should teach us something about how God works and how God has worked in our lives it it should reveal to us the nature by which we stand without Christ I hope that makes sense for you today so let's get into this first outline entitled seeking to act justly uh, and we want to keep in mind uh, before the death of Jonathan, David's friend, uh, Saul's son, uh, 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 David and Jonathan throughout their friendship or relationship, they made covenants with one another. Very uh, specific binding covenant. Uh, 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 agreements uh, uh, between the two of them that would gauge their character to one another or their actions toward one another. Uh, and so as we think about this lesson, what is moving David is that uh, uh, in, in the, in the uh, present day, we might say that your word is your bond, right? Uh, the biblical sense would tell us that our yes should be yes and our no should be no. Uh, uh, but David is concerned about the oath or the covenant agreement that he has entered in uh, with Jonathan. And even though Jonathan has died by this time uh, of our lesson text, David has not forgotten about the, uh, the covenant agreement and, and what they had agreed to do for one another, what they had agreed uh, uh, prior to Jonathan's death and David it meant something to David uh, and so David as we pick this up in the first outline from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 9 verses 1 through 7 I want to read this from the uh, uh, NIV translation so David asks is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake, verse 2. Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. Uh, uh, they summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. Verse 3. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan of Jonathan he is lame in both feet verse 4 where is he the king asked Ziba answered he is at the house of my Kir, son of Amiel or Emil in Lodibar verse 5 so King David had brought from Lodibar from the house of my Kir, uh, son of Emil uh, so verse 6 is when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Verse 7, don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land 
that belong to your grandfather Saul and look, look at this and you will always eat at my table this is this is something that uh, we really should take a look at how this man David is conducting uh, his actions toward family members people that uh, or a family member of Jonathan that, that he does not know but he is on this quest David is to find a descendant of Jonathan that he might be a blessing uh, 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 to uh, Jonathan's descendant based on the covenant that they made with one another uh, but before his death and during the challenges David faced before becoming Israel's king Jonathan asked his friend to show kindness to his descendants this is in first Samuel chapter 20 verse 14 and 15 David agreed and was determined to keep his promise David's search for survivors of Saul's dynasty was more significant than what was required by his commitment to Jonathan. He was willing to find and show kindness to any of Saul's surviving male descendants. I just want to pause uh, right here and talk about the broader implications uh, uh, of this lesson. Keep in mind we're looking for Jesus, right? We're looking for someone in this text who can save. David is conducting or acting in the character of a savior. Uh, he is acting, he is illustrating here through his actions that he has the intent to be a blessing to someone that he does not know, someone that he has promised uh, uh, his friend Jonathan that he would be this sort of blessing so uh, David for Jonathan's sake uh, you, you can look at 1st Samuel uh, chapter 18 uh, uh, verses 1 through 4 uh, but David is intending to lift uh, this poor cripple Mephibosheth to a place at the king's table as one of the king's sons, right? Similarly, the gospel of Christ lifts us out of our shame, constituting uh, uh, us uh, sons uh, and giving us an inheritance. And I want you to look at Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 16 and 17 and so this lesson if we look at it in a broader context it begins to make sense to us present day that you and I uh, uh, as sinners we were like Mephibosheth we were crippled by sin we couldn't walk the way God wanted us to walk uh, our direction uh, uh, in life uh, was hampered by sin by sin uh, uh, we can trace this all the way back to the fall, if you will, of Genesis 3. Uh, but we had a problem, a problem of walking up right before the Lord. And it took God to, uh, 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 as John would say in John 3, uh, uh, 16, that for God so loved the world, God went into action, right? He came to seek and to save those individuals who were lost. Uh, uh, we were just like Mephibosheth. We couldn't uh, walk. Uh, we were crippled uh, 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 by our sinful nature. And, and, and as you think about this lesson here, uh, David, uh, it doesn't matter. This is the beauty of this text, right? It doesn't matter the condition of Mephibosheth. He still is, uh, uh, David is still going to bless him even though he is a cripple, even though uh, uh, he can't walk, even though uh, 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 he is in a low place in his life and had been such uh, 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 since he was a baby, uh, Mephibosheth. But, but, but David uh, uh, is seeking to do something for him. And look at the attitude of Mephibosheth here in verse 6. It says, when Mephibosheth 
uh, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David. Look what he did. He bowed down to pay him honor. Uh, this is something that we need to keep in mind uh, as a posture of salvation and then one that we need to remain in. Uh, so we ought to give God the glory. We ought to honor him as God. David represents for us in this context a type of Christ, if you will. He is a man after God's own heart. So if, if that's the case, right, and we know that to be true, then he should act like God. He should act like his, his savior. Uh, he should act like his creator. So David is illustrating for us uh, uh, the character, if you will, of his creator. And so, uh, 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 but Mephibosheth, uh, uh, offers himself as he says in verse 6 he says I'm at your service right <laughs> this is beautiful uh, but David calms him down in verse 7 he said don't be afraid David said to him for I will surely did that sound like the language of Jesus Christ uh, 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 surely or uh, truly truly I'm going to bless you and David says here without a shadow of a doubt I will surely show kindness to you this king is bringing everything to bear everything that he is able to do everything that David is capable of doing everything that is in or you know, under his control he is bringing it to bear to bless this cripple and this is how you and I got saved God brought everything to bear everything that we needed uh, because he has all power in heaven and earth in his hand he is surely able to save he is surely able to bless he is surely able to keep us right uh, and so David goes on to tell him whatever it is that you lost and I'm paraphrasing here but the text says uh, uh, verse 7 says uh, David says I will restore you to all the land that belong to your grandfather Saul and you will always eat at my table I'm gonna put it back everything that you lost or uh, I don't know what it is or uh, how much territory that had been uh, lost right I don't know uh, what the uh, uh, content of all of the loss would have been for Mephibosheth but David is declaring here I'm going to put it back. I have the capacity to restore to you all the land, everything that you lost. Don't you see how God has blessed us? What God did, let me just share this with you today, church. What God did when he saved us, he put us back in the order that we needed to be in before we fell into sin. God put us back in the natural or the spiritual or the supernatural order of things. So now we are living to seek and to please and to praise God. That's the order that we lost. So that cripple walk that we had in sin, God has straightened those crippled feet and now we are walking in the newness of life. Now we are able to walk up right before the Lord. Now we are able to lift up clean hands without wrath and without doubt. And so now because of the action of the king, he has put some things back. And David goes on to declare, look at this, and you will always, you will always eat at my table and since you and I have been saved how long have we been eating at the Lord's table in other words how much grace and mercy have we received how much has the Lord blessed us how much has the Lord revealed to you that you are at his table and that he will always be a blessing uh, 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 the book of Hebrews says that it says it like this God says I will never leave you and I will never forsake you so in other words we will always be nourished because our Savior has come to our aid and he has promised never to leave us 
nor forsake us. And I don't know what Mephibosheth had on his mind uh, prior to David coming to him and having uh, someone bring him sin for this young man, but his day is new. His whole course of life has now changed at the word of this king. The king has the authority. God has the authority. And so when God spoke that word over your life, the devil had to let you go because he recognized the authority of the king that that is speaking over your life today. I hope it's making sense to you today, church. I hope this historical account is making sense to you in 2021 that it took a king to come to our rescue. It took a king to, to bear this kind of blessing over our lives because we were crippled. We were not able to do for our Ourselves, but now, since the Lord has come into our lives, we can say that a great change has come over me. And so, and so, uh, uh, David is just declaring here. But I had to stop and share this with you today because I got excited when I saw myself in Mephibosheth. I got excited when I saw the King, uh, uh, King Jesus, coming to my aid in the in this text. When I saw David being used by God, I could understand now the purposes of why God sent His only begotten Son that He should give His life and share his blood for our sins that I needed to uh, a straight walk God saw I was crippled he saw I was falling all over the place but a savior came into my life and declared that I would walk upright and the savior came into your life and declared that you would walk upright and look how long you've been saved look how many days you've been on the Lord's side and so uh, the king is just letting uh, Mephibosheth know you don't have to worry about eating anywhere else but at my table. That's where you're going to always be. I'm going to provide a table uh, 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 before you in the presence of enemies. I'm going to set you beside me and you're going to eat what I eat. I don't know what you was eating before today, but that meal is going to change. Now you're going to be nourished at the king's table. But I kept on looking at, at this thing to see that David had sent for him immediately. Uh, so it granted him Saul's personal estate and guaranteed, watch this, lifetime support. Humbly and understandably fearful, uh, Mephibosheth presented himself to David and questioned his motives, right? But David assured Mephibosheth that he had nothing to fear because of the promise that he made to his father Jonathan's, Jonathan. So the practice of victorious kings was to execute deposed rulers and their families to prevent future rebellion, right? That was the that was the custom. David changed all of that. So David's inquiry and purpose for locating Saul's surviving descendants were unexpected. Watch this, and unprecedented. You know, sometimes people say that we don't have a right to be saved. Somebody might have said that your your praise was radical. Somebody might have said that it didn't take all of that. But what God did for you and did for me is unprecedented. Uh, the, the, the places that he brought us out, you know, it's, it's, it, we don't even want to think about it. Though, but you ought to look back and see where the Lord have brought you from. You ought to take another look and see how crippled you were uh, before the Lord stepped into the your, into your life. So don't have the attitude that you don't understand who Mephibosheth is. You do know who he is. He was you at one point in time in your life. And he was me at one point in time in my life. But God with this unexpected, we didn't know that that, that, that day that the Lord was going to save us, but he changed our lives forever. So David's commitment to God's standards for justice and his promise to Jonathan motivated him, watch this, to seek one of his survivors to bless. We are survivors, right? We are survivors of sin. 
We are survivors of shame. We are survivors of disappointment. We are survivors of heartache. We are survivors of death. We are survivors of destruction. I could go on and on. We have survived. We have come through hard trials and tribulations. We've seen the storm raging in our life. We have felt the, the winds blowing uh, 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 on our life. But God came in in the nick of time. God came in just like David. David came into Mephibosheth's life and blessed him for the rest of his life. So, despite David's uh, 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 latter moral failure against Bathsheba and her husband Uriah, David's integrity toward honoring his word to Jonathan was apparently strong. David could have justified his right to wage revenge against Saul's descendants but his desire to bleed to please God was more potent potent let me say this to you church if God had paid you and I what we really deserve if God had sought revenge for the way that we used to be and how we lived and how we shamed his holy name and his character who could survive but I heard somebody wrote a song they say he looked beyond my faults and saw my knees and this is where we are today God is looking beyond the faults it doesn't matter to David anymore what has happened in the past it's a new day he's acting differently and Mephibosheth as a result of David's action he's gonna be different the remedy watch this the remedy for overcoming anger resentment bitterness hostility grudges and strife is an intimate obedient relationship with God preacher you might say I don't get it I don't understand how I can't let it go I can't let it pass by what he did to me and what she did for me but I preached uh, my very first message my very first message years and years ago when I first came into the ministry the topic was staying in position to help a sinner Staying in position to help the sinner. And we have to stay in a position, in a spiritual, in a spiritual uh, a position where we could be a blessing. Don't ever let yourself get to the point where you can't let it go. If it, if it was that bad, ask God to help you get over the hump. Ask God to help you to forgive it and let it go. Ask God to help you do what he did uh, uh, for you and for me when he came into our lives and so this is where as believers we have to get a little better and a little stronger uh, 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 more intentional about our love for one another and we these things that if I had time you know these kind of things that keep you out of the kingdom of uh, uh, this bitterness and his, this hostility and this grudge and, and, and all this leads to is unforgiveness right we can't let it go but David had to let it go David had to look beyond the past David had to look to the covenant this is what gets us up in the morning if God held against us let me let me just let me just bring it to you this way if God didn't forgive you and he decided to punish you by not giving you tomorrow or not giving you another moment how would you feel about that if God decided because he was mad at you that he didn't want to be a blessing to you anymore that he discarded you as one of his own you wouldn't feel good about that and so this is the uh, the place we have to get to uh, uh, as we grow up in Christ that we have to become more obedient even unto death that's how Jesus got exalted right the Bible said he became obedient even to the point of death and death on the cross Philippians 2 when you have time but the question is asked here what are the challenges of our intentionally seeking to show kindness toward those who have wronged us the challenge is where are you in the body of Christ where are you in your walk with the Lord where are you in your maturity and how you see what God has done in your life that you ought to emulate what God has done in your life to someone else and sometimes as we uh, go along in this thing and uh, we are going to find that people are going to do us wrong 
But as I've shared over the years, uh, when I know who my enemies are, I go in prayer for them and I call their name out to God. I don't want God to kill them. I want God to save them. Uh, but it takes Christians praying, those of us who are strong, uh, we are to bear the infirmities of the weak, right? We ought to be able to carry that load. We ought to be able to talk to God about these individuals. And I understand, I get it, because it's difficult sometimes when people have wronged us. But David is looking uh, uh, for this man. Now, Jonathan can't do him any more harm uh, or any harm at all because he is he has died, right? Uh, uh, but David could have took an opportunity and said, well, I won't honor that covenant that Jonathan and I had. I'll go through and I'll punish and I'll do whatever I want to uh, uh, Jonathan's family. I mean, who's going to question it? But that's not what he's doing here. He's taking the high road. He's acting outside of the norm for king and he is being a blessing and he is telling this man in front of everybody you know they're going to see Mephibosheth this crippled man at the king's table how did he get there the king said it was all right the Lord said it was all right that's why you saved today God said it was okay that he saved you he authorized you he blessed you he sealed you with his Holy Spirit and there there you are and here I am saved as though we had not uh, ever been crippled. I hope it's making sense to you today, church. I want to move on to this second outline, provision uh, for just treatment. This is taken from 2 Samuel uh, uh, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. And again from the NIV translation, Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything, that belonged to Saul and his family. Verse 10. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him. Right? And bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. David is using everything in his arsenal here to be a blessing. And Mephibosheth, a uh, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Verse 11. And Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table. Watch this, church. Like one of the king's sons. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 12. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. And all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. Because the king said so. The king ordered it. The king ordered this blessing. The king anointed this blessing. The king authorized this thing by his command. Mephibosheth and everybody that was associated with this event had to do exactly what the king said had to be a blessing to this young man because he's crippled right but I like this and look at this in verse 10 you and your sons and your servants are to form the land for him <laughs> huh? and bring in the crops do it for him here's a man Mephibosheth, he bowed down to honor David. But since he's crippled and can't do for himself, David has ordered. Now it don't, somebody sang a song that said, can't nobody do you like Jesus. He's my friend, right? He picked me up and turned me around. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, right? He healed my body and told me to run on. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. But David is ordering it here. You go work for this crippled man and bring back the crops and give it so he can have something, right? So he'll be provided for. Go get the crops. Go work for him. He can't do it. This is beautiful. But he's going to eat at my table. Verse 11. 
Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Church, we ought to always be humble that we are in a place spiritually. We are in a place physically. God has blessed us beyond what we expected and there's still yet more to come. But it's incumbent upon us to keep the right spirit. Just because you are at the king's table now, that is not where you used to be. But now that you are at the king's table, don't point your finger down at the other crippled guy. There's some more Mephibosheths out there that's not at the table. But we ought to do everything we can to make sure that they get to the king's table. Right? There's still room. There's still room at the table. There's still room at the cross. Right? For more Mephibosheths to sit at the table. Keep the right spirit, church. Keep the right attitude. Right? You didn't have to be at the king's table. You could still be crippled. Falling all over yourself in sin. But the Lord has saw fit to elevate you. And to bring you to a place that you had never been before in your life. And if it had not been for the grace of God. Where would we be today? Let's pray. Father God we thank you. For this historical account. Father we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for stepping out, seeking to save those who didn't deserve to be saved. You know all about our crippled state. But you brought us out with a mighty and an outstretched arm. Father, and I would just ask that as you, as, as you continue to bless us, help us to keep the right attitude. Help us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt Father, we thank you for every ear that is listening today. Everyone under the sound of my voice today. We thank you for Jesus Christ and what he provided for any and for everyone that desires to be saved. They can be saved simply by confessing with their mouth and believing in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. We can sit at the king's table. We thank you for it. Father, we are yet praying for this country. All of those who are sick and shut in. The bereaved families, we cover them in this prayer. Somebody that may be listening right now is probably not feeling well, but we speak healing over their life today. Some may be struggling with finances. We, we speak prosperity over their situation. In the name of Jesus, our King, our Savior. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.